time for another episode of Did I Splurge or Did I Save? If you are new to my channel, this is a fun game that we like to play. I create three DIYs, and if I spent over $20 creating the DIY, then I splurge. If I spent under $20, then I saved. Pretty easy, right? Well, let's put your knowledge to the test and see how many you can guess right. We're going to start off by creating a gorgeous fall flower arrangement in a large ceramic pumpkin bowl. So what do you think? Did I splurge or did I save? I splurged. Now I will show you exactly how much I spent after we're done creating this. I have seen some beautiful floral arrangements in pumpkins this season and I wanted to create one for myself. The problem was I didn't want to use a fresh pumpkin because I wanted the arrangement to last all season long. So my solution was to find a pumpkin soup terrine to replace a fresh pumpkin. This was such a great find. I found it at Ross. And I don't need the soup ladle right now, so I'll just put that off to the side. Inside of my pumpkin terrine, I'm going to start off by putting some floral foam. Now, typically I do the tape grid method, but because we're going to be adding the lid later on, I need some foam in there so I can securely place the lid back inside. The florals that I'm using are from a variety of different places. I got some at the Dollar Tree, I got some at Michael's, and also at Hobby Lobby. One of the things that I'm going to be using are these little seed pod things. I remember them from the 80s. My mom had some flower arrangements and I would always pull them out and like use them as maracas and shake them around. <laughs> so they are fun to play with, but they're not the prettiest botanical. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray paint these little seed pods gold. I got some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I took a plastic cup and I poked the stems into the cup so they would stay upright. I sprayed these seed pods thoroughly and then I let them dry for 20 minutes. Now it's time to add my gorgeous flowers to my soup terrine. So I just simply took my flowers and I added them sporadically into the foam. I made sure that I spaced out the colors so they weren't touching each other. You don't want a big burgundy flower next to another big burgundy flower. So I spaced them out according to color and size. Once all of my flowers were in place, I took those gold seed pods and I placed them evenly in the front. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this pumpkin lid on the top because I just love the way it looks. It's another fun element, so I really wanted to add it to this arrangement. I took some floral foam and I pressed it into the lid so that it was really tight inside. Next, I have three wooden skewers. I took some wire cutters and I trimmed the wooden skewers down to size and I placed them into the foam. Then I turned that pumpkin lid around and I placed it inside of my arrangement. I pressed it into the floral foam. The skewers that are poking into the lid are going to hold that lid securely in place. Once the lid was in place, all I had to do was add a few more fall leaves to finish off the look. Isn't this floral arrangement absolutely stunning? I am so excited to have this out all fall season long. And once Thanksgiving rolls around, all I have to do is wash it out and get that soup ladle back out and I can put some food inside. So it's a piece that's gonna be doing double duty for me. So let's break down the cost on this. We'll talk about exactly how much I spent. So the biggest cost was the soup terrine. I purchased it at Ross and it was $21.99. So that in and of itself was a bit of a splurge and do you wanna know a little secret? 
I actually bought two because what if I want chicken noodle soup and clam chowder? You've got to have two, right? So the next cost was the florals. And I'm going to say that I spent $10 on the flowers. And finally, we're just going to clump miscellaneous items together, the floral foam and the wooden skewers, as well as the spray paint. And we'll say that we spent a dollar on those. So in total, I spent $33 on this arrangement. I think that that's an okay price and it's definitely a splurge, but I would spend that money again to get this floral arrangement. What do you think? Do you think it was worth $33? Okay, are you ready for project number two? It's gonna be this framed fall art. This is in a gorgeous mirrored and gold detailed frame. Inside, I have some wooden leaves placed on top of some fall cardstock. So what do you think? Do you think I splurged or did I save? I saved. And again, I'll show you the cost breakdown after we're done creating this DIY. First up, we're gonna take some wooden leaves and we're going to make them shine. I got a package of wooden leaves at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to add some veining to my leaves to give them some extra detail. The first thing that I did was I simply just got a pencil and I traced some veining on the wooden leaf. I did two separate designs that were similar but not identical. Once the tracing was finished, I got out my wood burning tool. Now you can purchase wood burning tools at Michaels or at Walmart for $10 or under, they're really affordable. So all I did was I took my wood burning tool and I traced along the pencil markings on my leaf. You don't need to press hard, you just need to have an even motion and continue moving. If you do pause, it will obviously burn that area a little more than you would if you were continually moving. So just keep that wood burning tool flowing as you trace over those lines. It only took me a few minutes to burn these lines into both of these leaves. Now we're going to add a little bit of shimmery shine to these leaves. I'm going to be using this Perla paint that I purchased at Michael's. It has a beautiful sheen to it. I got my sponge brush and I painted a light coat over each one of my leaves and then I let them dry for two hours. Now we're going to add a little bit of shimmer in the form of some bling wrap. Now, originally the reason why we're going to do this is because there's a hole in the top of these leaves where you can hang it up as an ornament, but I didn't want to leave the hole there. So what I did was I got a little teeny piece of that bling wrap and I placed it over the top of the hole. Then I added a few more sparkles sporadically throughout the leaves. I love the way that the gold sparkles add additional detail and interest to these leaves. So let's talk about this pretty frame. I loved the mirror edge and the gold detail on the inside. It caught my attention and I just had to have it. I removed the paper and the foam from the inside of the frame. As the backdrop, I'm going to be using some pretty cardstock. I had a whole book of cardstock. I selected the one that I wanted and tore it out. I got my Cricut self healing mat and my rotary cutter. I placed my cardstock down first, then used the paper that I pulled out from the frame as a template. I placed it over the top of my cardstock. I traced around it. Then I cut it to size with my Cricut rotary cutter. Now I'm going to place my leaves on top of this cardstock. I got some double-sided tape and I placed some pieces on the back of each one of my wooden leaves and then I placed them on the left-hand side of the cardstock. That way it didn't block the beautiful fall botanicals on the right-hand side. Once the leaves were in place, I put my cardstock back into the frame 
And now I have a beautiful piece of fall art that I can display during this autumn season. So let's go over the cost breakdown of what I spent to create this art. Again, the big cost was the frame. I purchased this frame at Ross for $8.99. Again, totally worth it. I will be able to use this frame again and again, so I think it was worth the cost. And the second part is the fall leaves. They were from the Dollar Tree. I only used two, so that's gonna be 33 cents. And then I'll group together the miscellaneous, which is the paint, the cardstock, and the bling wrap. We'll say that those parcels cost $1. So in total, this fall art cost me $10.50. Again, I believe it was totally worth it. And we definitely saved by DIYing this piece ourselves. Now it's time for our final project. You get one more chance to test your knowledge. Are you ready? I have these gorgeous, acorns a set of two look at how large they are with a beautiful gold top so what do you think did i splurge or did i save i splurged and again i will show you exactly how much i spent on these when we're done and i will say this was by far the easiest project that we are going to do of the day so let's talk a little bit about these acorns. I purchased this set at Bell's. They are pretty plain, a boring brown, but we're going to paint a gold highlight to the top to really make them come alive. So I'm going to be using two types of craft paint. I'm going to mix them together one is a little more flat and one has a sheen to it. I purchased both of these craft paints at Walmart. I took a sponge brush and I painted on the gold paint. I put the paint on the raised details on the top of the acorn. I painted on a fairly thick coat in the beginning because I wanted to make sure I got each part of the raised detail. Once I had on a fairly thick coat, I got a napkin and I gently wiped off the excess paint. This technique ensures that it's not too saturated in the gold paint. I continued doing this until each part of the acorn top was covered in the gold craft paint. Then I did the same technique on the stem by painting on the gold paint and then gently wiping it off with the napkin. Once I was finished with my first acorn, I moved on to my second and repeated the painting process. Once I was satisfied with the way that the gold paint looked on the top of the acorns, I let the paint dry for two hours. How easy was that? But look at the difference that it made. It took this from a plain brown acorn and now it pops. The paint highlighted the intricate shapes on these acorns, plus by adding a second color to this monochromatic acorn, it makes it so much more dynamic. All right, so now let's talk about the costs of what I spent on these acorns. I told you I purchased them at Bell's and each acorn was $12.99. So if you did want to save, you could just buy one of these, but I like to buy sets. That way I can have more than one to decorate with. So that was obviously the big cost of this DIY. The paint, we're going to say that it cost 50 cents because I really didn't use very much. And those were the only costs that went into creating these. So total price to create both of these was $26.50, which I think is a great price because look at how beautiful these are. So how did you do today? Did you get a couple of these splurge or saves right? Hopefully I tested your knowledge just a little bit 
and made it a little tricky for you. What this game does is it just shows you that you don't have to spend a lot of money to create some beautiful pieces. But sometimes it's okay to splurge just a bit in order to get something that is gorgeous, something that will last for a long period of time, something that you can use throughout the entire season, put it away and then pull it back out next fall and use it again. I just finished up making the cutest pumpkin candle and I made it with only two things. I also took an existing candle and themed it in an autumn pumpkin design. And then I took a plain Target Magnolia wreath and turned it into a fall wreath that's going to highlight my pumpkin candle. All of the wonderful fall decor is hitting the stores right now. And one of the things that I love shopping for are the seasonal candles. This year I thought I am going to make my own. I found a super cute bowl and lid at Ross for only $5.99. I mean, how cute is this? And I knew it was going to be perfect for my candle. So this pumpkin bowl is item number one. Item number two are some candles, just plain white candles, that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two of these candles because that's the amount of wax that will fit into my pumpkin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get a pot full of water. Now this water needs to come to a very low boil or a simmer. It doesn't need to be a rapid hot screaming boil, but just warm enough that it will melt the wax. So once it was at the temperature that I wanted, I took my two candles and I placed them inside of the pot. It took about 20 minutes for the wax to completely melt and dependent on the size of your candle, it could take more or less time, but 20 minutes was the time that it took for these to completely melt down. Now that the candle was melted, I pulled out the wick. I wrapped it around a wooden skewer and placed it inside of my pumpkin. I did this with the second wick as well. I made sure that the wicks were both placed in the center of the pumpkin, equidistant from each other. Now that my wicks were placed inside of my pumpkin, it's time to pour in the melted wax. I used a hot pad to handle the hot glass container and I pulled it out of the boiling water. Then I slowly poured the wax into the pumpkin. I repeated this process with the second container of melted wax. Now we just wait for the wax to cool down and solidify. It took a couple of hours before I felt like I could handle the container safely. So let it dry for a little while, a couple hours should do the trick. And then I took some kitchen scissors and I snipped off the excess wick and trimmed it to the correct size. And that's it. How easy was that? Now you could add some essential oils or some kind of scent to your wax if you wanted to. I didn't have any fun ball scents, so I just left mine plain. But I feel like my whole candle making world has just been opened up by doing this project. You could take any heat safe bowl and turn it into a candle. You could do this for so many different seasons. You could theme it to almost anything. If you had some extra bowls lying around the house, this is a great way to upcycle them. I guarantee you'll be seeing me do this again at Christmas time. And how affordable was this? I spent $5.99 on the pumpkin bowl and $2 on the wax. So a couple of bucks. And I absolutely love the way that this turned out. A second alternative for a fall candle is to take a candle that's already existing and just embellish it. I found this candle at Walmart 
It was $4.98 and it is a mold cider scent, which is just so fall in my opinion. And I really love the yellowish orange color of the wax if it's in perfectly with autumn. So first off, we're gonna take the silver lid and we're going to paint it gold. I'm also going to get a knob. Now these knobs were original knobs that were on my kitchen before I did the kitchen remodel, so I have a whole bunch of these left over. I took both of my pieces outside and I spray painted them in a Rust-Oleum gold spray paint. I sprayed them thoroughly in the paint and then I let them dry for one hour. I'm going to be using some clear Gorilla Glue to attach the knob to the lid. I put some glue on the circular base of the knob first and added it to the center of the lid. And then I added some glue to the knob itself and added it to the center as well. Now that the lid is completely transformed, we're going to add a beautiful detail to the glass part of the candle. In my Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project. I clicked on Images. In the search bar, I typed in Pumpkin Damask. Several options came up. I scrolled down and I selected this pumpkin. I hit Insert Images. It brought it to my Design Space and I wanted three, so I hit duplicate, so I had three pumpkin designs, and then I put them, as you can see, I put them right next to each other, so that eventually it would create one large design. Once it was all put together, I selected them all and went down and welded it together. At this point, I could size it to the size I needed, so I selected it, I hit the unlock button, and then I typed in the size that would fit on my candle. Once it was done, I hit make it and it sorted it. And I'm going to be doing it without a mat because I am going to be using a smart vinyl, a white permanent smart vinyl. So I selected smart vinyl permanent and then I hit more on the pressure. I loaded it into my Maker 3 by hitting the flashing arrow button. It measures out your material first to make sure you have enough. Once it's done, I hit the flashing play button, which began the cutting process. When it was all finished, I hit that flashing arrow button again, and then it released my material and I hit finish on the computer. I weeded away the excess vinyl from my pumpkin design then I added the transfer tape to the top. I removed the backing from the vinyl and then placed it around the center of my candle. I pressed the vinyl firmly to the glass with my scraper tool and then removed the transfer tape. This was such an easy way to take a ready-made candle and embellish it. This would be a perfect gift Again, this cost me hardly any money. It was super affordable, and it's going to be a great addition to any fall display. I love looking through the Target dollar spot. They always have some great treasures there. One of the treasures that I found recently was this Magnolia Leaf Wreath. It was only $3.00 and I'm going to transform it by painting some of the leaves gold. Now I couldn't pull off the individual leaves because of the way they were attached to the wreath. So what I did was I got some butcher paper and I wrapped it around the parts of the wreath that I did not want to be spray painted gold. I pulled the leaves that I did want to be painted gold through the butcher paper and then taped the butcher paper around the stem. I took my wreath outside, I sprayed the exposed leaves in the same gold Rust-Oleum spray paint that I used for my candle lid and knob. I sprayed the leaves thoroughly, making sure they were completely covered in the gold paint. Then I let them dry for one hour, and finally I removed the butcher paper from the wreath. To add a little more fall sparkle to this wreath, I'm going to be adding some 
Dollar Tree Sparkly Gold Leaves. These are fantastic because they have the little clips on the back, so it was really easy to attach these leaves to the wreath. I just put them on equally around the wreath, and I love the added dimension that it gives. The final addition is going to be adding a cream satin bow to the wreath, and I added some fun sparkly pumpkins to the tails. In my Cricut Design space, I hit New Project, I went to Images, in the search bar I typed in Pumpkin. Several options came up, I scrolled down and I selected this pumpkin right here and hit Insert Image. It brought it to my design space, I selected it, and then I welded it together to make one solid pumpkin. I selected it again and sized it to the size that would fit on my ribbon tails. And then I hit duplicate, so I had two. Then I clicked make it. It sorted it, and I'm going to be doing on the mat. And then I clicked continue. My material is going to be a smart iron-on glitter. And I forgot to put mirror, so I edited it, and I put mirror, saved it, and then I continued by hitting more on the pressure. I loaded my material into my machine by hitting the flashing arrow button. And then I hit the flashing play button, which began the cutting process. Once it was all finished, I hit that flashing arrow button again, which released my mat. And finally, I hit finish on the computer. I weeded away the excess vinyl from the pumpkins. Then I got out my easy press. I set the temperature to 330 degrees and the timer for 30 seconds. I placed my vinyl pumpkin on the ribbon tails. I made sure the protective coating was on top. I placed my easy press over the top of the vinyl pumpkins. I hit the C button, which began the countdown. Once the 30 seconds was up, I removed the easy press and then I pulled away the protective plastic covering over the pumpkins. To attach my ribbon to my wreath, I'm going to be using some floral wire. I got a pair of wire cutters and I cut a segment of this floral wire and then I poked it through the center of the knot on the bow, twisted it around the bow to secure together and then I attached the floral wire and the bow to the wreath. Now that the wreath is all done, I'm going to add my pretty little pumpkin to the center. I love the way that this wreath highlights this pumpkin candle and adds a bit of extra flair to this display. These DIYs were so much fun to make and have really got me excited for fall, especially the pumpkin bowl candle. Oh my goodness, it's just opened up a whole new world of candle making for me and I'm excited that I finally took the plunge and started to do that on my own. So I hope that you got some inspiration today and that some of these ideas resonate with you and that you'll feel confident making a couple of these fall DIYs for yourself. One of my favorite places to shop is Home Goods. I can spend ridiculous amounts of time there just wandering up and down the aisles, smelling candles and looking at pretty things. Well, I was there the other day and I saw this really pretty fall swag. I loved the white pumpkins and thought the green leaves were a unique spin off the traditional orange and amber leaves. It also had some pretty pearls and gems on it. I looked at the price, it was $29.99, which isn't bad, but I knew that I could create a similar piece for less. To start off making my swag, I needed some branches. Now, the easiest and most affordable way to do this is just to wander about in your neighborhood and find some sticks, which is what I did last Christmas time. I found some branches and I spray painted them gold. 
This isn't gonna cost me anything, plus I got a lovely nature walk out of it. So I'm going to arrange my sticks pointing outward. I got some floral wire and I cut a few segments. I wrapped it around several points along the swag. The floral wire will hold the branches in place. To fill in the gaps and make the swag feel a little more lush, I decided to add a few more thin sticks. I found two bundles at the Dollar Tree. I unwrapped them. I only needed the stick portion, so I put the dried green flowers to the side. I positioned the sticks over the top of the gold sticks. Then I took more of that floral wire, wrapped it around these twigs to securely keep them in place. I added the thin sticks to both sides of my swag. Now for the greenery. I really did love how the original inspiration piece had a lighter and brighter palette. The light green leaves make it feel so much more bright and cheerful. I purchased a few stems at Michael's. Luckily, they were 40% off, so I ended up only spending $10 and five cents on these two stems. I took my first stem and I bent it into three distinct sections. I placed it on the top of my swag and then I secured it to the branch swag with the floral wire. For my second stem of greenery, I actually got some wire cutters and I cut off a few of the smaller branches off of the center piece. I took the shorter pieces and I placed them inside of the swag. Then I took the remaining large center stem and I bent that as well into several different directions. And then I placed it on top of the swag, again, securing it all together with that floral wire. So now that the actual swag portion is completed, now it's time to add in all of the pretty things. We're going to start off by adding these white and cream pumpkins. Now in my inspiration piece, they have those white and cream pumpkins. The difference is these Dollar Tree pumpkins had some brown stems. I didn't want them to be brown. I wanted them to be gold. So I took those stems and I just yanked them right out of the pumpkin. Then I poked these stems inside of a plastic cup. That way they would stay upright while I was painting them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted on a thorough coat of paint, making sure that every part of the stem was covered. Then I let them dry for one hour. Once they were dry, I simply took those stems and I poked them right back into the original hole at the top of the pumpkin. Simply painting these stems gold made a huge difference. It's so much more impactful and it looks so much more high-end. I also had this cream pumpkin already in my stash, so that's not gonna cost me any additional money. To attach the pumpkins to my swag, I'm going to take a segment of that floral wire. I'm going to bend it in half, add a dab of hot glue to the bottom of the pumpkin, and then place the center of the floral wire in the hot glue. Now I can place my pumpkins on my swag. I decided to do two on the left and right that were the white ones and then the cream one in the center. So I just took that floral wire, I wrapped it around some of the branches that were on the swag and then I twisted the wire together. My inspiration piece had some pine cones on them. They were just plain. I have some pine cones that I've decorated with for Christmas. My pine cones have white tips, which I like better than the plain pine cones because it ties in with the white pumpkin. I am going to attach these pine cones to my swag with that same floral wire. I'm going to take a segment and I'm going to wrap it around the bottom layer of the pine cone needles and then twist the wire together. Once each one of my pine cones had a wire wrapped around the bottom needles, I was able to place them on my swag. Again, I simply located the branch on my swag, wrapped the wire around the branch and twisted the wires together to secure it to the swag. Lastly, we're going to create these pretty pearl and crystal picks. I got a bag of 
pearl beads at the Dollar Tree. And I also had some crystal vase fillers already at home. Once again, the hero of the day is that floral wire. We have used it throughout this entire thing. So why not use it to make these as well? So I took a segment of this floral wire and I poked it through the center of the pearl bead, wrapped it around it, and then twisted to secure it together. Once I had all the pearls on, I moved on to the glass vase fillers. I got some hot glue. I added it to my glass bead and then pressed it onto the wire. To attach my pretty pearl and crystal accents to my swag, I'm going to take that wire, wrap it around a branch, and then twist the wires together. So here is my final swag. It's a pretty good dupe, right? I think we did a great job in recreating what I saw at Home Goods. Now we did customize it a little bit. The pine cones had the white accent on the tips and I did have some gold branches, but besides that, I think it's a pretty good match to the original. Now let's go over the cost and find out how much it cost me to make my swag and how much we saved. So if you remember the original price on the home goods swag was $29.99. I didn't have to purchase very many things to create mine. So the money that I did spend was on the leaves that I purchased at Michael's. The two stems were $10 and five cents. And so we're going to round that down to $10. It's just easier to do math that way. So $10 for the greenery and the rest of the things I purchased were from the Dollar Tree. I got the two velvet pumpkins, I got the bag of pearls, and then I also got the two bundles of those thin sticks. So that cost me $5 at the Dollar Tree. So in total, this swag cost me out of pocket $15. That is a 50% off savings from our home goods inspiration piece. What can I say? I love a good bargain. Let's move on to home goods dupe number two. This time I'm going to purchase a piece at home goods and use it to recreate a much more expensive piece that I saw online. I bought this yellow ginger jar at, of course, Home Goods. It was $19.99. I absolutely love the shape and the size of this ginger jar. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right and it has the perfect amount of detail. My inspiration piece is this white ginger jar with a gold accent. It's roughly the same size, but the big difference is the price. This one costs $109. Now that's pretty pricey. So why don't we try and make it for less? The first thing that we're gonna do is take our bright yellow ginger jar and we're going to paint it. I got a white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. The reason I'm using this particular paint is because it's a paint plus primer. So that way when I spray paint my piece, it will ensure that that bright yellow color will be covered up. So once the jar and the lid had been completely covered in the first coat of paint, I let it dry for one hour. Then I sprayed on a second coat of paint. Again, I made sure that every part of the jar and the lid was covered in the white paint. Once it was completely painted, I let it dry for three hours. Now, there are several options that we could have used to create this stripe around the edge. I could have used some Cricut vinyl. I could have painted it on with some gold craft paint. But in the end, what I decided to do was to use some gold washi tape. I purchased this washi tape at Target. I placed the tape on my jar and then pulled it tightly to create a straight line. 
It is also important to press the jar with your finger as you're laying it down. This will get rid of any air bubbles. I wrapped the gold washi tape around the circumference of my jar and then cut the tape once I got to the original starting point. Because there's curved edges on my jar, the tape did tend to ripple up just a little bit along these curved edges. So my solution was to take my Cricut scraper tool and to press the air bubbles out of the corners. By using the scraper tool, I was able to get all of the air bubbles out to press the tape firmly to the jar and it smoothed that tape right out. Done. Easy. Look at how fantastic this jar looks now that it's white and gold. It will be able to act as a gorgeous accent piece on several displays and easily be incorporated into all of my seasonal decorating. So let's talk about the price. Now our original piece was $109. Yikes, I'm not gonna pay that. But what I am willing to do is to find a piece that's $19.99 that has potential. This yellow jar was not the color that I wanted, but a little bit of paint is an easy fix. So we spent $19.99 on this. I spent $4 on the paint and we used about half of a can, so we'll say $2 for the paint. And then we just used a little segment of the washi tape. And so we'll say that was a dollar. So in total, this cost me $23. 109 minus 23 is 86. That's an $86 savings. And I think that mine is just as beautiful as the inspiration piece. Now I'm going to show you how I displayed all of my things on my coffee table. So I'm going to scoot back a little bit so we can talk a little bit about it. Get over here to coffee table level. Coffee table level. Coffee table level. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Coffee table level. 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 <laughs> Should probably practice that. Can you say that five times fast? <laughs> All right. So I'm over here by the coffee table and I'm going to talk about what is on it. We'll start off with these pretty velvet pumpkins with the gold stem. I purchased these at Bell's. They just look so elegant with that fabric and I love the gold curly stems. They're so pretty. Next to my pumpkins, I have this gorgeous blue and white ginger jar. It is absolutely huge. Can you guess where I got it? <laughs> if you guessed home goods, you're right. I purchased this a couple weeks back and it was $69.99, which is a little bit of a splurge, but if you were to buy this anywhere else online or at a different store, it would be two to three times that price. So if you can find ginger jars at Home Goods, scoop them up because they really are affordable comparatively to other places that you can buy them. So next to that, I have, of course, our beautiful white ginger jar with the gold stripe. And then to the side, I have some pretty little navy blue pumpkins. I got these at Target. And again, I painted the stems gold to match my other pumpkins. And of course, down in the front center stage, we have our beautiful fall swag. I love the way this looks. It ties in all of the colors. It is a neutral piece. And for the price, I think it looks fantastic. This coffee table display is a classic and timeless way to decorate for fall. Fall is coming and I am so excited for this time of year. So we're gonna start decorating today. I have created three DIYs that you can either keep for yourself or you can sell for a pretty decent profit because who doesn't want extra spending money, especially during this upcoming holiday season? I know I do. I'm also going to be giving you two free printables so you can make these projects at home. I love scrolling through high-end websites and finding a beautiful pieces of home decor and then recreating them for, of course, a lot less. So that's what we're gonna do today. 
We're gonna start off by making this beautiful runner. I have seen fall runners all over the place and they are a great way to decorate in a subtle way to theme your decor for fall. I found the fabric that I'm using for this runner at Walmart. It was two yards for $4, which is a great price. And I'm just going to cut it into a runner shape that fits this particular table. And I'm simply going to hem the edges. This is a sewing project that is a piece of cake. All you need to do is fold in about a quarter to a half an inch on each of the four sides and do a straight stitch. This finishes off the edges so that they are crisp and clean and the fabric won't fray. This whole process of cutting and sewing maybe took me about 10 minutes, so it was super quick. What is more fall than pumpkins? I created this pumpkin design. It has three little pumpkins and a couple of vines and leaves. And this is one of the free printables that I'm going to be giving to you. You will find a link to this free printable in my description box so you can print it off or you can use it in your Cricut Design Space at home. So what I did was I took this design and I simply just uploaded it to my Cricut Design Space. My Cricut Design Space, I hit new project. I went to uploads. I had uploaded my pumpkin design previously and I will show you how I did that later. I clicked insert images. It brought it to my design space. I went to the top and I sized it to the size that I needed. Then I hit make it. It sorted it onto my mats and I clicked continue. Now I'm at my material stage and I clicked on a smart iron on glitter. I'm also using a gold smart vinyl that I can put right into my Cricut Maker 3 without a mat. When you're doing an iron on, it needs to be a mirror image. Now I forgot to do that. Luckily it reminded me. So I hit edit, scroll down and hit that mirror button. And then I clicked save. I clicked more on the pressure. When you're using iron on, you make sure that you put the shiny side down, which I did. And then I loaded it into my maker. I hit the flashing arrow button and now my machine is measuring the length. So it rolls it in to make sure you have enough and then spits it right back out. Once it was done measuring, I hit the flashing play button, which began the cutting process. Once it was a hundred percent done cutting, I unloaded my material by hitting that flashing arrow button. And now I have my beautiful design. And finally I hit finish on the computer. Now it's time to weed away the excess vinyl from my design. I use my weeding tool and because of the size of this design, it's almost three feet, really large. So it did take me some time to weed away all the excess vinyl and I did cut off the top portion so I can use that vinyl in another project. That way we're not wasting any extra material. One of my favorite parts about the Cricut Maker 3 is that you can make huge designs like this. Next, I got out my Easy Press and my Easy Press mat and I set the temperature on my Easy Press to 330 degrees and the timer for 30 seconds. I placed my Easy Press over my pumpkin and I pressed firmly. I let the timer run down and move my Easy Press along the entirety of the pumpkin design. Once everything had been ironed on, I removed the plastic coating and now I have a beautiful custom fall runner. And the only cost that came out of pocket was the fabric and I ended up using a third. So that was $1.33 and then the vinyl. I have seen runners for $20, $30, $40 and on up. So to make this for such an affordable price is a definite score. In the fall, for me, we get together a lot more with friends and family. And with all of that entertaining, it's fun to have some customizable pieces that you can add to a tablescape. So we're going to make some customized place settings. And one way to customize each place setting is with an individual place card. I'm going to start off by making my place card with a wooden turkey. I got a package of six from the Dollar Tree 
and I'm going to stain it in a Minwax Pickled Oak stain. I got a paper towel and I rubbed that stain over the front and the sides of the turkey. I let it dry for 30 minutes, then I flipped it over and I stained the opposite side and then I let it dry completely, which took three hours. To customize our turkey, we're going to add a name to the center. So we're going to head back over to our Cricut and make it there. In my Cricut design space, I hit new project. I clicked on images. In the search bar, I typed in fall leaf frame. Several options came up. I scrolled down and selected this one and hit insert image. In my design space, I sized it to the size that I needed and then I clicked on text and typed in my name, Lisa. And once I was done, I selected my font, scrolled down and chose this one. And then I shrunk the name and placed it in the center. Then I did select all and went down and welded the two designs together. Once I had my one design, I clicked make it, sorted it onto my mats. I'm going to be doing a smart vinyl, so I selected without a mat and then I click continue. I chose a champagne colored smart vinyl. So I selected in my materials a smart vinyl permanent and I hit more on the pressure. I loaded my material into my machine by hitting the flashing arrow button and it began to measure the length. Once it was done, I hit that flashing play button which began the cutting process. Once the cutting was 100% completed, I unloaded my material by hitting that flashing arrow button and now I have my beautiful design and finally I hit finish on the computer. I pressed my vinyl firmly together and then I weeded away the excess vinyl. I put a piece of transfer tape over the top and pressed the transfer tape firmly to the vinyl and then I removed the backing. I placed my name in the center of the turkey and I pressed firmly with my scraper tool and then I removed the transfer tape. The last step is to add a cute little copper ribbon to the top. I purchased this ribbon at Walmart. I cut a segment and I simply just threaded it through the hole and tied a bow. And now I have a customized, cute little place card holder that you can put at every single place for each individual when they come over for a special evening. I mean, this was so affordable to make. I spent a dollar for six of these. In fact, I will put up the cost right here of everything that I spent to make this place card holder. I have seen them on Etsy where they go from anywhere from $3.50 up to $15. So if you wanna make some quick money, this is a good way to do it. To go along with our place card holders, we are going to make a customized napkin ring. Now, this is my inspiration. I really loved the transparent ring and the message that was on the front. I have some gold spotted Cricut foil acetate that I'm going to be using for my napkin ring. And I created the design that I'm going to use. This is another free printable that you can have. I will leave a link in my description box so you can make these at home. And what I did with mine was I simply just transferred it over to my Cricut Design Space. I clicked on New Project, then I hit Upload. I had saved this design to my downloads and I simply just dragged and dropped it into my Design Space. I hit Simple and then I clicked on all the spaces that I wanted to be transparent. My Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project, I went to Uploads, and as you saw, we uploaded our leaf earlier, so I just selected it and hit Insert Image. It brought it to my Design Space, and then I sized it to the size that I needed, and then I hit Duplicate. Now, I know you guys didn't see that I made two, but it's always good to have a backup, so I made two of these leaves, and then I went over and selected Make It. It began to sort it and I am actually using a mat on this one. So I selected on the mat and hit done. And then I clicked continue. Now it's time to select your materials. Now, if you don't see your material, hit browse all materials. A gazillion options will come up. 
I mean, like they had every option imaginable. So I scrolled down until I found the foil acetate. I selected it and clicked done. Now I can hit more on the pressure. I loaded my material into my machine by hitting the flashing arrow button, and then I hit the flashing play button, which began the cutting process. Once it was 100% done, I hit the flashing arrow button and then finish on the computer. Now at this point, all I needed to do was pull away the excess acetate from my leaf design. My inspiration piece had some fall words on it, so I'm going to put thankful on mine. In my Cricut Design space, I hit new project and I hit the text button and then I simply just typed in the word thankful. I chose the font that I wanted and then I sized it to the appropriate size. Then I hit make it. On the Cricut Maker, you can either select with a mat or without. I'm choosing on the mat. I clicked done and then I hit continue. I selected my material, which was vinyl, and then I hit more on the pressure. To load my material into my machine, I hit that flashing arrow button, and then I hit the flashing play button, which began the cutting process. Once it was 100% done, I hit that flashing arrow again, which unloaded the material from my mat. Then I pressed that vinyl firmly together, weeded away the excess, got that transfer tape, put it over the top, pulled the backing away from the vinyl and then placed this onto the center of my leaf, pressed it firmly together with my scraper tool and then pulled away the transfer tape. Then I just simply rolled my leaf into a ring shape and in the back I had cut two holes. I added a segment of that same copper ribbon that I got at Walmart and just simply tied it into a bow and then I took my napkin and I folded it in half to make a triangle. I took the center of the triangle and let the sides drape down. And then I got my napkin ring and I just slid it over the top. Okay, how cute is this thing? I mean, it's, it's adorable. And it's great because you can customize it again to whatever you want. And it was super duper affordable. The only cost was the acetate sheet a little teeny bit of vinyl and a little teeny bit of ribbon. And that's it. You could make a whole bunch of these. And again, I've seen napkin rings range in all price ranges. So if you did want to sell these, this is another way that you could make a fair bit of money. So what did you think about the projects today? Super cute, super easy, super affordable. You can either make them for yourself or again, you can sell them. I am so excited to start decorating for this upcoming season. And guess what else I'm really excited about? See that kitchen over my shoulder that I've been working on for a month? Well, we are wrapping it up. There's like one or two other things I need to do to finish out this project. I am absolutely in love with the way that it turned out and I am beyond excited to share everything with you. So look for that video in the next couple of weeks because it's coming and I just can't wait to show you what we have done. I have more fun fall decor for you today. We are going to be doing a trash to treasure, taking a decorative urn and giving it a makeover. We're also going to be doing a Mod Podge pumpkin and I have another free fall printable. We're going to start off with this decorative urn right now. I have had it for a very long time and originally I got it at Hobby Lobby. I've loved it. It's been loved, it's been used, and now it's been worn. So it's got a whole bunch of paint chips all over it. And honestly, I'm not really in love with the color anymore and so I'm gonna change that. What I am in love with is the shape. It is a classic, timeless shape that will never go out of style. So let's go ahead and update it a little bit. What we're gonna do is first start off by painting it. I'm using some white gloss Rustoleum spray paint. In order to protect the inside of the urn, I'm going to get a foam plate and place it inside and then get some blue painter's tape and tape the edges. I took my piece outside and I sprayed it thoroughly. 
I got underneath this piece, all around, every single side, made sure that it was really well coated, and then I moved on to the lid. I saturated it again in the paint so that none of the original color was showing through. Once both of my pieces were completely covered in the white paint, I let it dry for 30 minutes. Then I returned and did a second coat. Again, I made sure that each part of the decorative pieces were covered in the paint. Once everything was covered in the second coat of paint, I let it dry for three hours. I really liked the gold accents that were on this piece originally, so we're going to recreate that look. I'm using some metallic antique gold craft paint and a thin paintbrush. I painted the raised circles along the rim and on the bottom portion. Then I painted in the grooves on the base. Once I was finished with the lower portion, I began to paint the lid. Again, I put the paint on the raised circles around the rim and then I moved on to the decorative finial on the top and I painted this gold paint inside all of the grooves. The gold paint highlights those intricate details on this piece and makes those designs stand out. Now this piece is completely transformed. I just love the way that it looks. It's so classic and timeless. It will go with every season. It's a great addition to my fall display, but again, I can use it for summer, spring, fall, or winter. Last year, I got a green pumpkin in a Michael's grab bag, and I didn't particularly love the color. But what I did love were these napkins that I found at Home Goods. This package of white and gold damask print napkins were only $2.99. They are going to be a perfect way to transform this pumpkin. We're going to be using some Mod Podge and these napkins to transform it. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the stem from the top of the pumpkin. That way it's not in the way while we're Mod Podging. Now it's time for the napkin. I'm going to separate the two ply portion, the bottom from the top layer. So that way I'm just left with the top layer of the napkin. The reason why I do this is because it's much easier to apply one layer than it is to do two. I've done it before with both layers still intact. And what happens is you get some bubbling that gets trapped between the layers and then it kind of separates. So for me, I like to remove the bottom layer. So I'm just dealing with the one singular top layer for the Mod Podge. So what I did with these napkins was I put it at the top of the pumpkin and then I pulled it down to the bottom so I could measure how long I needed to cut my strips. And then I simply just cut those napkin pieces into long strips. Then I got my Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I added the Mod Podge liberally to the surface of the pumpkin. Then I took my strips, placed them at the top and then laid the napkin on the pumpkin. I also pressed gently against the pumpkin so the napkin would adhere fully. At this point, I just continued to add those napkin strips to my pumpkin. I overlapped the pieces so that the edges would lay smooth. Once I was done adding my napkin strips, I let the Mod Podge dry for about 30 minutes. The reason why I let the Mod Podge dry in between coats is because the napkin is so thin. If you directly add the top layer of Mod Podge right now, there's a, a chance that it's gonna tear, the napkin's gonna tear because it's so wet. So I like to let it dry a little bit, that way there's no tearing when I go to add the top layer. So after the time was up, I got my top layer of Mod Podge and I put that over the top of the entire pumpkin. I made sure that everything was covered in the Mod Podge, then I placed it on a cup so it wouldn't stick while it dries to the foam plate and I let it dry for two hours. While the Mod Podge is drying, let's talk about the stem. The stem was okay, but I wanted it to be 
a little more fancy. So we're gonna add some of that same gold metallic craft paint to the stem. I simply painted the gold paint on the stem and then I wiped it off with a napkin. That way it wasn't completely gold. By removing some of the paint, it makes the stem look more natural. And then I let the stem dry for one hour. Now that everything is dry, it's time to put it all back together. I poked the stem back into the original hole that was at the top of the pumpkin, and now it is transformed. The Mod Podge method is a great way to customize your pieces. You can get whatever color, design, or themed napkin you wanted. This way you can make custom decor. Dollar Tree frames are great blank canvases. You can do so much with them. And if you don't like the final outcome, you're only out a dollar. So that's a pretty good deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this white and gold Dollar Tree frame and customize it. I'm going to remove the glass from the frame and then I'm going to create a custom design on my Cricut Maker. I loaded some smart gold vinyl into my machine. It cut the leaves and then I added the gold vinyl detail to the upper portion and the lower portion of the glass. This vinyl detail adds a pretty sheen to the glass and this is a removable vinyl so I can take it off and theme this specific frame to another season or a party if I wanted to in the future. So now let's get on to the free printable part. I found this pumpkin printable online. I did not create it, but it is free. So I will leave a link to where I found it in my description box so you can print it off at home if you like it. I simply printed out this free printable and added it to my frame. This is such a cheap, easy way to theme some seasonal decor. I find free prints online all the time. So if you're on a tight budget, this is a great way to create some cheap seasonal decorating pieces. I hope you enjoyed creating these seasonal decor pieces with me today. All I did was I found pieces that I was not using anymore and I transformed them into some great seasonal decor. By doing this, I did not spend very much money at all. So just look around your house and find some things that you're not using anymore and give them an update. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.